Welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with the spirit of truth. This book that came through the mediums, Chico Xavier and Valdo Vieira, 60 years ago, yes, in 1961. And that is a book that deepens the understanding of several passages in the gospel according to Spiritism by Kardec. Today, Andre Lewis, one of the spirit authors of this phenomenal masterpiece, brings to us what we need so much. I think this lesson, spiritual healing, is a lesson for us to meditate for a few days especially during the pandemic. Spiritual healing. Who doesn't need the healing? Yes. So here we go. We are going to go straight to the gospel according to Spiritism. Chapter 26. Give freely what you have received freely. Item 1. Which is a quote from Jesus as reported in Matthew 10, 8. Of course, chapter 10, verse 8. When Jesus said, Restore health to the sick, raise the dead, heal lepers, and cast out demons. Give freely what you have received freely. Before we begin talking about what Andrea Louise wrote, as I'm here with you today, just had a session with some spiritists in Brazil who are leading a study, of course is in Portuguese, but I'm passing on to you. I study on the recent book that was psychographed by Divaldo Franco. A book by the spirit author Manuel Filomeno de Miranda, No Rumo do Mundo da Regeneração, on the way to the world of regeneration. In that book, he talks about the behind the scenes spiritually of our very pandemic. And he talks about people who don't believe in the pandemic, that they have an inner difficulty in their own evolution because it's not difficult when we read the spiritist literature to understand that we, in our humanity, created this virus mostly with our mental bacteria. We can read more about it in the book, The Messengers, but in the book Liberation by Andre Luis to Chico Xavier and many others, telling us that we create mental bacteria and these mental larvae, they will create compacted clouds that will rain on us according to our affinity. So inside of us, we have this predisposition, especially when we are weak morally especially when we are, and we're talking about the diseases in general, though diseases can be an expunging method in our lives. On the other hand, we need to pay attention to the moment that we're living. This pandemic, says Manuel Filomeno de Miranda, is supposed to be of a greater shakeup than the Spanish flu. Of course, it makes sense because now we have at least three, almost four times the number of people who were incarnated back then. And it affects the whole world. And the more people misbehave, the more people do not watch out and allow this virus to spread. It mutates in stronger versions as we're seeing mutations that are happening. Where is our contribution in this? Good question. 
as this scholar that I'm mentioning to you that was leading this study in Brazil, Zélia, Regina, Jorge, she was saying, right now it's a grave moment that more than ever we need great vigilance, extreme vigilance and prayer. And she explained what vigilance means. It means constant dedication to the good. So we're going to use the screen. Of course we will, because we're here to study together, right? So right now we need extreme vigilance and prayer. Vigilance meaning constant dedication to the good. I know, we know many people are tired of it and say, oh, I can't take it anymore, I wanna travel. This is not the time. This is not the time to think about our selfish things. This is not the time. This is time for us to do what? To help others. You may know, and I know many people who are suffering who discarnate during this time. And if they don't discarnate out of coronavirus disease, they discarnate of other things and they don't have family members around. And when they discarnate, they have to be buried the same day, same day. Barely people have time to catch up. It's a very difficult time. Though, we are optimistic, though we are joyful, but we need to ask ourselves, how much are we dedicating our time to the good in our everyday life? And to the good, not only to ourselves, because when we talk to the good, it's to the general good. How much are we dedicated? So here we go. When we talk about it, let's do some math before we read Andre Louis' message. Because Mentor Joseph a while ago said, let's measure the use of our time in the good. And he said, let's do the math. If every day we have 24 hours in a week, we have 168 hours. How many of those 168 hours a week do we dedicate to the general good? Oh my gosh. And we may be asking, but Vanessa, what about my work? No, it's good but there is a reward. We're talking about the general good without expecting no reward, including, including the reward of our salary. So here we go. How many hours? Because some people say, oh, I like to do the good, but it happened years ago. I like to do the good and it happened. No, we're talking about now. Well, Vanessa, we can't go anywhere, any place because, oh no, we need to be creative. There are new ways of being useful. You can send flowers to people. You can send food. For example, think about an emergency room in a hospital. How many people are in the emergency room helping doctors, nurses, therapists, staff, tired, consumed, and busy with their family life and, and then taking care of their profession. They are in the front lines and this time is very consuming for healthcare providers. We can send them food. We don't need to know them. We just send and deliver. But you may be asking, but Vanessa, I don't have much money to spend that way. Okay. So then every day, spend an hour a day praying 
For whom? For whomever. For example, think about a hospital and do a visualization. Jesus sending good energies to that hospital. And you spend time visualizing that. Visualize a country and good energies entering the country. Visualize streets, homes, cities. You can look in the news and pray for the people who are there in need. No matter the case. If we, if we can't give money, we can give of ourselves, of our good energies. So spend time praying for others. Even if we wake up in the middle of the night, stop everything. Some people are like, what do I do? We stop breathing in and out. And start praying for this person, that person, for that group, for that family, for this celebrity, that celebrity, for this country, that other country, for the government of each country, for hospitals, for nursing homes, for refugee camps, etc., 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 etc. There are many ways of helping, but doing nothing, we cannot afford it. So the question is, how many hours of 168 every week do we spend in constant work of the good? Because that's vigilance and prayer. Nothing, right? Usually, no. We take care of our things. But when this isn't that good, yeah, it's good for you. But not necessarily. It's It affects everybody if we fulfill our duties, yes. But we're talking about another good. Without charity, there's no salvation. If we keep ourselves self-centered, only doing the good for ourselves, our family members, it's not enough. We need to talk to people. We need to sacrifice our time. We need to be to give people a hand. Okay? That's how it goes. Now, let us talk about Andre Lewis and his recipe, spiritual healing. Are you ready? Yes, we are ready, right? Let us then study it together, shall we? I will share it just today for how special it is. The very free translation. It's free translation. It's not set on stone, okay? It's not set on stone. So we are here together to study this, okay? Here we are. Start by praying. If we want healing, start by praying. And if we want to help others, heal others, be healing mediums, start by praying. Impossible to do it without prayer. Prayer is light in the shadow in which the disease is installed. So it's like a way to shed light on the disease. So joy, hope is joy in the heart. Escape from impatience. Some people are like, come on, Vanessa, read it, read it. I, I need to do something, just read the message. I can do the interpretation on my own. Sorry, huh? but that impatience doesn't take us anywhere. What is more important than knowing the immortal truth? Good question. Escape from impatience. All irritation is a magnetic disaster with unpredictable consequences. Keep confidence. Doubt casts death rays. Do not criticize. Censorship is a shock on the agents of affinity. Conserve mildness. The aggressive word Holds work to square one. Do not be shocked or scandalized. The body of those who suffer is a sacred object. Help spontaneously for the good. Sympathy is cooperation. Do not cultivate enemies. Aversion is vibratory calamity. And interpret the patient as if they were yourself. Every spiritual healing takes root 
on the strength of love. Wow. What about that? Hmm? What about that? Let us then go over one by one. He's talking about us healing ourselves, healing others, being instruments of healing. Okay? Where do we begin? Prayer. But let's observe that everything he says, Andrea Lewis, it's all about energy vibrations. He explains in vibrational language. It's vibrational language. Prayer. Vibration of light onto the disease. Joy, it's a pump to the heart. And then he says, be careful. Now, emotional lessons. No to irritation. No to criticism. No to doubt. No to aggressions. No to being oversensitive. No to intolerance. You see, it's no wonder we ask, why don't we have so many healing mediums nowadays? Because nowadays, people are not practicing this emotional mildness. Yes, we're not tranquil. We're always snapping. Observe the pattern nowadays. Even children, they snap. And they react. And everything has to be fast. And people are paying impatient, instant gratification. Healing doesn't come true in those circumstances and conditions. It begins in prayer, in hope and joy, but in patience, because of our irritation, creates a magnetic disaster. When people say, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. This place is no good. And we think we're so spiritual. Look at Chico Xavier. Look at Chico Xavier. He was brought by his father. A very difficult scenario. He wanted his son to no longer be a virgin. He brought him to a house of prostitutes. And there she is. There they are. And Chico is there. Is Chico feeling an aversion, impatient, irritated? Like, come on, I'm a medium. No. He's there to serve. He's confident because he trusts in God 100%. Because doubt casts rays of death. How many people nowadays, because of the pandemic, they are not confident? They are feeling insecure. Is that bad? It's terrible. We need to be confident that all there is, is God. Look at this flower I drew a little while ago. Look at this flower. Think of this flower as the energy of God emanating, emanating. I'll show another one if you like another color. I have it in all different colors, okay? Blue. I have it also in pink, okay? And I ask you to visualize it, the flowers, as energy vortex that is emanating to all of us. God is constantly embracing us. So I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. And we're saying, we are not afraid. Of course, I feel fear sometimes, don't you? But then I quickly go there and say, mm, God loves me. God loves us all, all of us. No doubt God takes care of us. 
Where am I going to cultivate doubt? And insecurity? And fear? And he says to us that when we are in this relationship of healing with ourselves and others, like when we pray to help others heal, we can't criticize because when we criticize, we block the pathway of affinity. Censorship is a shock on the agent of affinity. Let's say I look at somebody who comes and needs help and I look at them and they don't look. You know, when people say, oh, I need help, and then we look at them like with hesitation, with inner censorship, we cannot be a vessel. We need empathy. How empathetic are you? Question. And be moderation in peacemaking skills every day. If we are people who are constantly saying harsh words, constantly reacting, constantly making sour comments, sarcastic, ironic, we are not going to be a good instrument of peace, of healing, of harmony. And if I am not spontaneously helping, I only help because I know who you are, but you, I'm not so sure. So I'm not so sure I'm going to help you. Then I will, in some way, not be the means through which help is going to come along. There are conditions, rule of engagement for spiritual healing to happen. And do not cultivate enemies. Aversion is vibratory calamity. Remember in the book, Harvest of Light by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. We've studied here at Cardiac Radio when Emmanuel has a whole lesson named spiritual immunization. And he talks about the two types of enemies we create. One, that actually is natural. We don't actually create. It just exists like it happened to Jesus. He didn't do anything and they were just there to date. And two, the ones we create with our intolerance. So then, you know, somebody comes to us and say, oh, do you like cheese? And then with our intolerance and our arrogance, we're like, I don't eat dairy because I'm vegan. I, I think, you know, we shouldn't be eating animal things. And then we're already criticizing. People are feeling judged. And then people are like, oh my gosh, that person thinks they're better than anybody else. They created animosity without noticing. We do that without, right? Without noticing, we may do this. And it's so bad. If we want to be instruments of healing for ourselves and others, we need to clear the path. To clear the path inside of us. If people think they are enemies, that's their problem, not ours. But if we cultivate them inside of us. You see the difference? It's not external, it's inside. I don't like that person. I don't like that one. I don't want to talk to that one. And then how are we going to be of help? Finally, at the very end, he finalizes with the golden rule. See the patient as if the patient were yourself. And then he ends with an explanation that is so Christ conscious. Every spiritual healing takes root on the strength of love. I will copy this out because this will be our focus. That's the main part of the message. Uh-huh. Right? Yes. I will.
Here you go. Let's study this main statement. Every spiritual healing takes root on the strength of love. So let's easily here draw a mountain. And then I'm going to draw here horse. Oops. And then roots. Roots. Deep roots of a tree. Don't mind the tree, the drawing, because I'm not used to drawing this. Okay, here. I know you don't mind. Everybody here at Cardiac Radio is so loving. For those who are just listening, we're drawing a tree on Zoom. And here we have the roots. Let's observe the roots. Every spiritual healing takes root in the strength of love. Look at nature. When we see spring coming up, we don't see at the beginning much, but in the soil of the earth, things are bubbling. Life is changing its dynamics and soon that life is going to come and show itself to us in beautiful, loving flowers and fruits that we all need. This is spiritual healing. This is spiritual healing. And he says, every, every, look at this, every spiritual healing, not one or two, any and everyone, meaning it's a rule of thumb. We're not going to heal ourselves or be instruments of healing to anyone if we don't have the magic word. We may sound loving with our nye, 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 the tone of voice, like, oh. but then inside, if we don't really have love, it doesn't come through. So for us today, I remember Dr. Fritz, a spirit doctor from Germany, who used to come and still comes through Ricardo Melo and others, but he comes, he used to come to another medium when I was a teenager. And we used to, my grandmother used to um, coordinate the spiritual with other people, the sessions. He would come from a city to this city, and many people would come, thousands of people. And remember, the strength of the spirit. Be strong, loving, but firm. Never speaking in a voice that is going to resemble what we are not. So it's not about how we appear or how we are. We need to be more authentic, more authentic. Let's think about this, more authentic. Because love cannot be masked. And if every spiritual healing takes root on the strength of love, the only choice we have, if we want to align with healing, is to bring that love from the roots of our being. Look at the hearts. Look at the hearts. Look at the hearts in the root of this tree, Virginia. Hearts. Right? Talking about a heart, you have a heart here too. Yeah. Right? And then Andrea Lewis, the spirit doctor, says, every spiritual healing takes root on the strength of love. Saying we're not going to heal or help somebody get healed if we don't have love, if we don't connect, right? Yeah, let's make more hearts. A cloud of it. A cloud of hearts. Right, Virginia? Yeah. Now continue talking. Right. Uh -huh. 
So as Virginia is showing the spread of it, and she's so right, because when we bring that about, it spreads to everywhere we go. Like a tree, the oxygen travels goes places. It's like heart oxygen. Oh, we love that. Virginia. Heart, heart carbon dioxide, huh? Carbon, we better breathe oxygen, right? I like yeah. when you say heart oxygen. Yeah, You're so right. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and heart hot water, don't forget that. One. Yes. Because it has oxygen. Yes. So let us remember of this picture and the bottom line of it all. What is going to be our exercise in the next 24 hours? What is it? What is it? Spread love. It's spread love. One of them. Okay, that's the exercise. Oh. Yes. That's Let's what do what the say. tree is yes you Do read it. my mind i actually read it yeah an accident. spread love however you want it can be in things it can be in your time okay thank you virginia for helping us so much so now friends let us visualize close your eyes for a minute visualize from your heart hearts of love and let us breathe out as if this were nourishment to people in our lives. Hearts, nourishing people's relationships, our relationships. Thank you, God, for making us co-creators capable of spreading your love. Your love. Yes, so be it. Right, yes. Virginia? Uh huh. All right. And don't forget how many hearts is in oxygen. Yes. Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, friends, for being with us at Cardiac Radio once again here at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with love. Ding. Love is in the air. Everywhere, look around. Love, love is in the air. In every sign, in every sound. Thank you, friends. See you tomorrow, God willing. Bye.